we're going to look at some examples where we show that certain real sequences converge by working directly from the definition of convergence. There are a number of theorems that can sometimes help us to show that a sequence converges. For example, the algebra of limits, the monotone sequence theorem, and the sandwich theorem. But we're not going to use these results. Instead, we're going to practice working directly from the definition. In this example, we're asked to show that this sequence converges to 3. So here, a1 is 7, a2 is 6, and from a5 onwards, all the terms are equal to 3. So what we need to do is show that this sequence satisfies the definition of what it means for a sequence to converge to 3. So we need to show that, given any positive epsilon, there exists an integer k such that for all n greater than or equal to k, the distance between a n and 3 is less than epsilon. So we'll start our answer by supposing that we've been given some positive number epsilon. Now the integer k that we're after is allowed to depend on epsilon, but in this case it doesn't have to. We can just take k to be equal to 5. Then thinking about that definition, we look at all numbers n greater than or equal to k. And we have that the distance between a n and 3 is equal to 0. So that's because for n greater than or equal to k, a n is equal to 3. Now 0 is certainly less than epsilon because epsilon was positive. Since this works, for any positive choice of epsilon, we've shown that this sequence satisfies the definition of what it means for a sequence to converge to 3. So therefore, we can now say that the sequence a n converges to 3. So in this example, we're asked to show that the sequence a n, given by a n equals 1 minus n divided by n, converges to minus 1. So here, a1 is equal to 0, a2 is minus a half, a3 is minus 2 thirds, and so on. So let's think about what it is that we have to show. We need to show that for any positive epsilon, we can find a number k such that from the kth term onwards, the distance between a n and minus 1 is less than epsilon. So for this particular sequence, that happens when the distance between 1 minus n over n and minus 1 is less than epsilon. So we begin our answer by supposing that this positive number epsilon has been given. Then we take k to be an integer greater than Well, I don't know yet how large I need to choose k, so we'll come back and finish this sentence later. Now, thinking about that definition, we look at all numbers n greater than or equal to k. And we look at the difference between a n and minus 1.
Well, a n is equal to 1 minus n over n. And this minus minus 1 becomes a plus 1. And we can simplify this expression to give us 1 over n. Now, since n is greater than or equal to k, 1 over n is less than or equal to 1 over k. Now, what I'd like is to make this last term less than epsilon. So I'll go back and choose k to be an integer greater than 1 over epsilon. Because if k is bigger than 1 over epsilon, then 1 over k will be less than epsilon. So I've shown that if I choose n large enough, the distance between a n and minus 1 is less than epsilon. Therefore, we've shown that the definition of convergence to minus 1 is satisfied. And now we can conclude that the sequence a n does indeed converge to minus 1. An interesting thing to think about here is that showing that a n converges to minus 1 is the same thing as showing that the sequence 1 plus a n converges to 0. The equivalence of these two statements is a consequence of our definition of convergence. In this next example, we'll define the even and odd terms of our sequence differently. So here the sequence a n is defined by taking a n to be 1 over n squared when n is odd, but a n is 1 over 7 n when n is even. And we're asked to show that this sequence a n converges to 0. So we'll begin by letting epsilon be greater than or equal to 0. Now let's think about what it is that we need to show. We need to find an integer k such that all terms from the kth onwards are within epsilon of 0. So to do this, we'll take k to be an integer greater than 1. Well, I'll need k to be bigger than two things, but I don't quite yet know how big these things are. So we'll come back and finish this sentence later. But let's look at what happens if we take an integer n that's bigger than or equal to k. And first of all, let's consider an odd integer. So thinking about what it is we need to prove, we'll look at the distance between a n and 0. Well, when n is odd, a n is 1 over n squared. So this distance is 1 over n squared. But we're taking n to be greater than or equal to k. So this will be less than or equal to 1 over k squared. Now, I'd like to make this term less than epsilon. So I should go back and choose k to be greater than 1 over the square root of epsilon. So if k is greater than 1 over the square root of epsilon, then 1 over k squared will be less than epsilon. OK, so that's good. And we need to do something similar for even values of n. So if we take n to be greater than or equal to k, and if we now assume that n is even, then again, we look at the distance between 
a n and zero. Now n is even, so a n is one over seven n. But n is greater than or equal to k, so this is less than or equal to one over seven k. So to make this last expression less than epsilon, I should go back and choose k to be greater than not just one over root epsilon, but I'll also choose k to be greater than one over seven times epsilon. Because when k is greater than one over seven epsilon, one over seven k will be less than epsilon. So by choosing k to be greater than both 1 over root epsilon and 1 over 7 epsilon, we can guarantee that when n is greater than k, we get that the distance between a n and 0 is less than epsilon. And that works for the odd terms and the even terms. Since this argument works for any positive value of epsilon, we've shown that the definition of convergence is satisfied and show the sequence in this example does converge to zero.